Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another reaction video. Today I'm going to be watching, reviewing, and reacting to Season 3, Episode 2 of Jessica Jones. So we left off with quite the cliffhanger at the end of the first episode, um, with Jessica being basically shanked, I should say, stabbed um, by who knows, some person who just showed up um, at her door um, late at night with the clear purpose of attacking her for some reason. Um, and other than that, the first episode was a lot of setup, you know, laying kind of the groundwork of where all the characters were at the beginning of the season after all the events at the end of last season. And we see Jessica kind of in a place where she has pretty much alienated um, or, or pushed away because of things they've done the people that she's been closest to. So she and Malcolm don't really seem to have any sort of relationship any longer, and there's still hostility there, and she and Trish are not interacting at all. She's actively ignoring Trish, um, and but she does go and try to find Trish when Trish's mother is concerned about her disappearing, and she finds her out there trying to basically be a superhero now that she's acquired these skills. Um, and she kind of chides Jessica for not doing that sort of thing herself and for trying to stop her, and so there's hostility there as well. So Jessica's not in a great place and then she gets stabbed is basically um, the beginning of the season. So with that being said, I'm ready to see what is going to happen now. Um, I'm assuming that Jessica is going to end up being okay overall, but who knows, you know, about recuperation time. But I'm curious to see if we find out anything about who stabbed her or why. Um, let's see. Let's get going with episode two. All right. Here we go. I've wished for this so hard, but I never thought it would happen. But it has. Mm -hmm. So she can actually see in the dark. Now, all I want is to share it with you. Uh -huh. But I took something from you. I can't change that. And you need time. I can't hurry that. I'll be ready when you are. I need a little time to myself. And I suppose I understand. After all you went through, that awful doctor. Mm -hmm. Jessica's mother. Mm -hmm. It's worse for Jessica. Shooting that monster is not one heroic thing Jessica has ever done. So they say. You know, she's advertising now. Trying to be a hero. Well, as long as she leaves you out of it. Oh, I'm out of it, all right. You don't need her. But you need someone in your corner. You've isolated yourself. It seems to come with the territory. Mm hmm. Yeah. Territory. It's just, is this what you wanted to talk about? You need someone you can trust to help I you mean, turn your unique talents Is that really you? And we're back on my career. Yeah. Patsy residuals aren't going to cover your mortgage, baby girl. You're my mother, not my agent. The phone rings, I answer. Uh huh. Ironically, the calls increased after. You blow up your radio show. Ironically, Ironically. I don't care. They are offering you a spot on a celebrity dance show. No! You always move so well. Not oh my happy. god. Fashion. You like fashion? Usually. There is a clothing company in Tampa. They are looking for a face for their new collection. Are you done? <laughs> well, you could run for president. A petition's being circulated online. Well, consider that my retirement plan. All right, I will find yes. something else. No, I am pursuing something on my own. Please don't say check off in the park. It's not on camera or on a stage. Well, honey, you're a performer. Without that, you're... Oh, jeez. No, just... It's great, Mom. Unavoidable. Thanks. only had you 20 minutes. I'll call you. Don't. It doesn't belong to you. Get off me. Now that might not be a big deal to you, but you make people feel powerless. And that makes you a piece of shit. Patsy. <laughs> what? No. Holy shit, it is. It's Patsy. Oh my god. Mommy, I'm not blind. This isn't a debate. Oh, oh my neck. I think 
think you sprained it. Good, you need to be stopped. I screwed you. Your show sucked. Mm. That's him. My God, you got him. He took my phone. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Oh Jesus. Ah. We got our Hellcat. That was cool. <clears throat> Good enough. <laughs> Popular these days? And you don't think I have good reason? Absolutely. I totally screwed up with you. But... But I also stopped a killer. Jessica stopped a killer? No, she didn't. It was me. murderer yeah <laughs> okay yeah wow well that's a lot you think it was wrong hey i couldn't live with it but clearly it hasn't slowed you down she's mm. bad guys who you protect as an investigator for a defense attorney you keep a lot of guilty people out of jail it is not our job to determine guilt but you know who's just digging at each other <clears throat> I don't know if this is anyone getting away with helping for either of you. Not doing this video again, Trish. Doing what? I know you moves. You will hurt as many people as you help. Well, at least I'm trying. I'm sorry you gave up. I'm not giving up. I'm just getting there my own way. Starting with this job, earning my bones. You can do it your way, but you should probably keep us on retainer given that we keep guilty people out of jail. I'll be in touch. <laughs> the kid if his dad had ever told him what a bastard is oh man desperation his dad's eyes crying begging me to hang up and all I thought was I got you and what would you have done if he refused to negotiate told the kid everything. I got the job done. <clears throat> That's what it takes. To earn a paycheck. Prove myself to Hogarth. Never do anything like that on my behalf again. Ever. Don't you look at me like I'm the one going off the goddamn I feel like neither one of you can condescend to the other. I'm working on a project. I know what your screwed up idea of a project is. You don't have to do this alone anymore. Neither of us do. It's time, Jess. There are too many horrors hiding in the dark, but I see them clearly now. I'm missing a piece without you. Maybe you feel the same about me. Or about your mother. Maybe I was wrong. That's the email that you should have sent.
You needed a moral compass. I was it. Now you're too busy blaming me to mm -hmm. admit that your mother had to be stopped. Got you couldn't separate good from bad. Got too emotional and started to get defensive. Well, at least she didn't send this, but you know, Jessica's not anyway, so I guess it doesn't. She thinks it was that guy? I mean, it makes sense. He recognized you. If it wasn't him, it, it might have been one of his thugs. His full name. Andrew. Brand. Thanks. Jessica. You're welcome. Well, that was episode two. Um, so Clearly, we didn't really find out much about why Jessica got stabbed or who stabbed her. You know, they have their own little theory at the end there, which I'm... Ah, it's not really going to turn out to be the case, I'm sure. Um, but, yeah, because this episode didn't really move the story forward, so to speak, um, time-wise anyway, this episode was really entirely focused um, on Trish and, you know, how she got to the point where she is is trying to actively be a superhero and going out and chasing down guys like this, this Brant. Um, and I thought it was interesting uh, to kind of, to see that, so, and, and see how she's kind of slipping, simultaneously slipping further and further into this and also seemingly slipping down into like a almost a depressed hole, it seems like, a hole of depression where she's telling her mother, you know, I feel like I'm all alone in this. And and on the one hand, it could be I'm all alone in this superhero thing, you know, in her message, one of her messages she was going to send to Jessica, she was saying, you know, neither of us have to do this alone. But I think it's it's more than that. It's also just in general feeling like she's alone and not um, understood or, or around anybody that, that cares about her or looks at her in any sort of positive way. You know, her closest relationships with Jessica and, and before this Malcolm, who she had been romantically involved with before everything fell apart last season, um, are both not just broken, but to the point where both of them are very hostile towards her, as we see throughout this episode. Um, and it's not that they don't have good reason. They do have legitimately serious, excellent reasons for not wanting to be around her. Um, but I do feel like with, with Jessica in particular, there's, there's a kind of, of a lack of willingness to, to see the other side or understand maybe what they what she was, um, what maybe drove Trish to that point and that there was, there, there is some validity to what the choice that she made there. Um, I don't want to say that in terms of like with her and Malcolm, but with, with what happened with Jessica's mother, yeah. Um, and I also feel like there's a lot going on with both Jessica and Malcolm where they can't really say much to Trish um, in terms of, of, of they can't really look down on her, her actions or judge her that much considering some of the things that they themselves have either done or, you know, are actively doing. You know, a lot of, we heard about some of the things that Malcolm has been doing 
And Trish is right to kind of call him out on that, but he's also right to call her out and say, you know, you might think you're doing the right thing, you've got this sense of yourself, um, the superiority sense, which she clearly does, but, you know, you actually hurt people, you blow up people's lives, and I don't know if this is a good idea for you to be out here doing this and thinking that you know exactly what should be happening, um, given your track record. And, and they're right. So it's, it's very, it's, it's hard because they all have valid points. Um, they're all, and they're all screwing up in certain ways. Um, and you just get the sense that if they were able to kind of kind of breach maybe the divide that they all have between each other at this point, that maybe having or maybe trying to reestablish some of that trust, if possible, could make things a little bit better. Or maybe they could kind of balance each other out with maybe some insight so they aren't all running off doing their own thing and, and giving into their worst impulses. Maybe. I don't know. But I thought that the scene with, with Trish writing the emails to Jessica and continuously like revising them until, you know, it got to the point where she was saying maybe I was wrong. I, I thought that was a really powerful scene because it, it made a lot of sense to me that this is something that, you know, you go through, that you can go through when you've been really close to somebody and they aren't, they kind of don't want to have anything to do with you anymore for whatever reason. Um, you, you could see her literally alternating back and forth between kind of guilt and just kind of trying to emotionally reach out to this, her sister who she loves and, and and say, you know, I need you, I love you, maybe you need me too, uh, I'm sorry for the things I've done, maybe we can understand each other. And like, she literally says, a part of me feels like it's missing. Um, but, but then at the same time, under these situations, you know, there's a kind of defensiveness and also an, an anger towards this person who you were close with, that they could cut you off in such a way. So, so, you know, she lets herself kind of be vulnerable and admit that maybe she was wrong. And then as she's getting emotional about it, that there's a kind of defense mechanism, a switch where she, where she deletes all of that and then comes out with this whole kind of condescending moral screed of, no, I mean, I'm the one that knows what's good and what's right and you don't and you needed me for that and, and, and becoming hostile. And you see that, I think, at the end too, where when she's seen Jessica in the hospital, you know, she's worried about her, she's trying to give a little bit, but Jessica just shuts her down and just turns away coldly. And then you see that change happen in Trish again, where she's, she's just like angry at her for her response. And I do think that that is a very good representation of the kind of conflicted feelings that you have with people in a relationship when it's kind of broken down. Um, where you can feel a simultaneous sense of, of, of like guilt and, and sadness and remorse for your own part of it, but also hurt and angry and, and you can kind of bounce back and forth. So I thought that was really well done. And then I also just really liked um, the little, the little like, um, trying on the different uh, disguises scene because they put in the, the homage to the Hellcat character that Trish is kind of like, a, um, you know, it's not exactly the same as in the Marvel um, comics world, but but there's there's connections to it. So I liked that a lot. I thought that was cute. But all right, I think that's gonna do it for this video. I'm gonna wrap up this discussion here today. So if there's anything you think I missed or that you want to talk about, questions, comments, please do leave it down in the comment section below. And otherwise, I'll just say thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully, I'll see you next time for episode three. Bye.